And once I was done with masturbating <laughs> <laughs> in front of my friend, oh, yeah, I nice. started to say that, oh, what's 3DS Max? Today we have a very exciting episode. We have a CG supervisor in the house and he is sharing his knowledge of the VFX industry. He's helping you guys to polish your showreels and he's helping you guys how to respond in interview situations. So be sure to check out this video. And the big nice bonus is he's actually sharing his journey, how he was a little kid in France and how he became um, a CG supervisor in the visual effects industry. So everyone, uh, we will be having Jan Dupont in here as a CG supervisor from Zoic. Um, it's a very interesting and insightful episode today, so be sure to check it out and obviously uh, leave your feedback down below. So let's check it out. So good day, everyone. So you can see Jan is already doing some, some behind the scene pictures here. Yeah, my wife has to know what I'm doing in the morning. <laughs> so see it guys. What's up? Let's I focus on the yeah, There you go. Um, yeah, so uh, thank you everyone for joining. This is uh, cool to have you guys here. We have a good buddy of mine here, Jan Dupont, who is right now a CG soup at Zoic. And before we were colleagues at ILM, and now he is climbing up. Uh, but. Is it a normal situation that I'm living? For sure not. So yeah. I don't know if it's really relevant of an indication here. And working from home has lots of challenge once you have an equip, a team sorry, to take care of. Yeah, I bet it's difficult, especially like you don't really interact with them one-to-one. -one. It's always over Zoom or yeah. some kind of uh, video, and right? As a CG supervisor, part of my job is actually almost going from desk to desk, seeing how yeah. people are and putting my hand if I can help. I cannot really take the mouse over when you're like that far away and sometimes I feel a little bit like a coordinator and just checking if the yeah. work has been done and I don't want to step on the toes of the VFX soup it's one of the very um, difficult tasks uh, as a supervisor CG supervisor is not stepping on the toes of the artist because they know they are the best in their field yeah. like uh, if I was today to supervise Harvid, he knows lighting better than me, why would I tell him what to do? So I end up uh, having a communication with people better than me, but supposed to buzz them around. <laughs> yeah. And at the same time, I don't want to step on the toes of the VFX supervisor, which has the final word on the look of the image. It's a very difficult place to find and yeah. get the trust of everybody and a reason to exist. Because very quickly you can disappear by saying, I don't want to step on anybody's toes yeah. here. Look, the previous experience we had, add a little bit of that, where sometimes we were questioning our CG supervisor. Uh, so it's, it's actually, that was my challenge. And uh, you start by trying to be a good friend and then buying respect by example. Yeah. That's what I've been trying to do. Do I succeed at it? I don't know. And the, the situation makes it impossible to answer. Um, so, and thanks of all, uh, first of all, we do got uh, quite a few questions over on Instagram. Um, and let's see, I did not really read through much of them, but one question is, uh, do you spend time on set as a CG supervisor? So, huh, it might differ from a company to another, uh, from a show to another, and from a CG supervisor to another. Here is the thing. I don't think you get much to do because we have actually on-set supervisor okay. that a company has dedicated for that. And then the VFX supervisor to do, maybe my, I would have to raise my voice if I see something which might make it very difficult for us in CG behind. Yeah. The reality is like, I was just a little kid and say like, oh my God, <laughs> the big camera, the crane, <laughs> oh my God, this and that. Oh, the actress like stealing a picture behind the curtain. Um, <laughs> that's typically you. <laughs> yeah, that's typically me uh, being very unprofessional at all time. But uh, no, so you don't get to go. Uh, I, I never seen that before. I never mm -hmm. even heard it from any other CG soup. Like it's very rare. I think on the current show, Alex Wang was actually on set. He's now VFX but you, soup. Yeah, you yeah. as a VFX. Oh, soup. true. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Right. It's probably VFX soup doing it. Right? Yeah. yeah. But it's a very rare occasion. It's not part of the process. It's if somebody above you cannot go, then you are invited. Um, or if there is this privilege that out yeah. of curiosity doing it but it's not part of the job 
so what do you think is important to when you are on set to make sure that everything is more fluent or working more easy on the on the CG side like what we do right what do you think is important on the set to make sure everything is set up in a right way that we have less issues when lighting? well um, I just have an example here to, to answer your question let's say that the camera is shaking all the time <clears throat> for whatever reason and you can speak with the vfx the director on set and say like is it really something you wanted because that's going to make our work very difficult behind yeah. and so it's not about telling the director what you should do or what he should do is actually like hey is it really intentional because you have to keep in mind that there is a cost behind that and yeah. it could be an in real time negotiation like you'll have as well production saying like yeah production might have more power than the director and might say us no to the director and yes to me because we want to keep the cost, cost down. Low, yeah. so it's all about evaluating what you see and like you keep in mind that oh this Just we are yeah. we are doing it because behind we need to replace the face yeah. can i do it as usual yes if it's not as usual you start to evaluate is it really on purpose because this is, this is extra cost and um, I'm not sure I'm experienced enough for okay. that. You need to be very, very experienced because you need to, here I'm speaking as a lighter. My, my experience is like uh, being a lighter in the industry. Yeah. But you have to think about, oh, is the rigger can follow that? Is the guy on tracking can do that? And you need to have their experience in mind. And that's extremely difficult right okay. now. Um, that's, a, that's a difficulty I meet every day as a CG soup. Yeah, as yeah. I was saying, like I speak with all the department, supposed to be above them, but they're obviously the best in their field. Yeah, well, yeah, that's <laughs> true. Um, so what I do have issues, like even working today on shots, like during the week, um, I had some issues that we had the person on set holding the rest of us up, but um, he had like a pole and then the bolts on both sides. Um, it was his custom made build or whatever. So and they shadow each other. <laughs> so, yeah, okay. so he was holding it like this with the poles up and down. And first of all, the sun was kind of three quarter behind him and he was holding it up like this. In when did I knew what you were going with? <laughs> oh. That happened all the time. I was, and then also it's, it's like 40 degrees. Um, the camera we're shooting at is like 40 degrees angle to the shot cam so it's you can't actually use those balls right. at all because the sun is like obviously just rotated but it, man i was having such a hard time because then the vfx tube is commenting on the rest spheres which are not at the same angle as, and you can't even trust yeah them. and then i said yeah you gotta think of it a bit different so what i did in the end i was actually shooting um, through the test camera and rotating that 45 degrees yeah, to that's show the way to yeah. uh, And interesting enough, you might have to create the same condition, putting a CG character <laughs> yeah. to shadow the sphere the same way, so you can mimic in the same condition. Yeah, I was um, thinking about that too. And that makes me think about something is, and that's open to controversy here, you might disagree with me. Um, I, I give more credit to matching the spheres than the quality of the HDRI I might receive. I might be able to match almost any, well, if the character is not made of glass okay. and super reflective, right? Yeah. But like, I care more about matching the spheres than receiving the best, the best HDRI in the world. I can like, sometimes I really yeah. feel like a 360 JPEG that I find is almost giving me what I need. Most, yeah, I, I do actually like what I did sometimes when I do tutorials. I use actually my phone to capture a sphere essentially just to get reflections, and then based on that, I can quite easily yeah, re replicate uh, that. Because it's true that you don't have the high dynamic range. So, yeah. like, if there is a pixel supposed to go above one yeah. and returning a value of like 40,000, but what do we do? It's like most of the time when we have an IBL and values above one, which are really a source of light to the scene, not just an ambient, we erase them and we replace them with a physical, not physical, but like a directional light, for example. So that's how unimportant it is. Yeah. It's like we're going to erase it and replace it anyway. So it's good to know, but the information you receive it anyway in the gray sphere and the ref sphere as yeah. an example to match. So uh, my take is like, if you had to put the effort on set on one thing, is more actually the, the reference spheres than the capture of the IBL. Yeah. If I had to give up on something, I can live without the IBL. What is IBL? HDRI, which means image-based lighting or high dynamic range image. 
in in French English. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you never use the word IBL? No, I, 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 it no. Was for them. It was for them, like okay. because I know it, the IBL is like what the hell? Like if we have new new people in the industry, they they, they most of it have heard about HDI probably, um, but IBL is more like. Uh, well, the reality is the like word, they are both the same one. The problem is HDRI start to be too much of a popular term that people use for picture that you blend together on Photoshop to create yeah. this HDR look. True. Yeah. And I don't want confusion with that because that's the opposite of what we do. We keep all the dynamic and all the shadow stay in the shadow. We don't lift everything like Photoshop flattening all the images together. Yeah. together. Yeah. So that's a very misleading term for us. And I started to switch to IBL for that reason. It makes sense, yeah. yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's distinguishing it more from like the Photoshop term. Yeah. Probably, so it yeah. is the same thing, it's just a way for me to communicate differently and make sure that people don't think that I'm doing Photoshop blending image. That's yeah. All, yeah. So you know Eric, right? Yeah, Salazar? <laughs> yes. Yeah. So he's in the chat too and he asked... Um, Good morning, Eric. Good morning. <laughs> um, if you do miss working on shots... Very much. Very much? Very much. Um, that, that's something which you will all meet at some point and no need to be a supervisor for that. Just being a lead sometimes disconnects you enough from the show. Uh -huh. um, and there is nothing worse than this because like first you started as an artist so you will miss it for sure. And second, you might get disconnected from reality and starting to boss around people who think like this guy didn't open the software <laughs> in years. <laughs> and you don't want to enter that field. Um, shots, like not work on shots. That was the main question. Well, so the, okay. the real question, the real answer is <laughs> I, I asked to still work on shots when I have time. So I kept some, not minor shot, but like not in a rush to deliver shot. Uh, to just be part of the whole project, right? To just understand what's going on and how to set things up. Yeah, right? uh, and every company is so different. And I've been at IAM for way too long, meaning I am very. I'm thinking that everybody works the same way. Oh, this is where a light, a lighting task start and stop. That differ from a company to another. It's actually Zoic, the lighters are very generalist and you still have to do some layout sometime or if they tell you like, can you arrange the post light in the street or whatever? Well, you can. Yeah. That's something actually you can because you're also on Maya. <laughs> uh, if you're in a software like Katana, this is, Katana is 95% a read-only software. Yeah. You read the data you receive, you're not supposed to start moving objects or populating a forest or like, you can if you want to. I strongly discourage people <laughs> to do it. It's very long. So um, I do shot because uh, I want to know what my artists can and can do yeah. and the way they work. So I know which department to call. I don't want to go ask a lighting artist like, can you add a tree here? And the guy said like, why would you ask me? That's layout department. <laughs> so you do actually ask to work really as an artist, at least at the beginning when you start in a company to know what they're passing through and what you can ask them. Yeah, okay. Cool, and um, someone likes your accent, by the way. <laughs> That's just being polite, <laughs> yeah. but thank you, I appreciate that. <clears throat> so how does the current situation, COVID, affect your daily work? Like, I guess you briefly talked about how you stay in touch with the team, but how does COVID essentially limit you or all that, right? What? What's... Yeah, um, so I'm going to answer a question you didn't ask but first in that situation I would prefer to be an artist than a supervisor okay if you give me like hey here is 10 shots to do please do it I could focus from morning to night on my work that I know how to do yeah being a supervisor and now I am answering your question is by definition being in communication with everybody well communicating with everybody when it's just through zoom team or whatever like yeah. hangout that's awful you look like just the guy who called to check, have you done your work <laughs> and did it well? Well, that's coordinator work, but I end up doing that. Yeah. So uh, it affected me a lot, especially as a new CG supervisor, which I'm still learning yeah. to be. It has been really putting a halt on learning my job, buying the trust of the team by communicating with them. Mm -hmm. It's about almost friendship, you know, like you yeah. sit next to somebody and you have to feel the vibe, you have to like have a good relation. 
So how much time would you say you spend in meetings versus you do actually one-on-one -on -one work with uh, your artists? I easily spend, I would say a minimum is a third of my time is based on meeting. Meeting meaning more than two people. Okay, and so what, what are these meetings about? Is it more like pipeline stuff or like targets or what? Yeah, targets. So targets. Um, um, every, every company will call it differently, but basically you touch base at least once a day, usually the morning with the entire team, meaning leads supervisor of the show, production is involved and say like, this is what we ask you. Yes, somebody is leading this conversation and ask you, this is what we spoke about yesterday, those 10 points. Did you have progress on it? Okay. Is it done? And they scratch the list and say, okay. this is not done, this is done, this is expected for end of the week. Yeah. Is there a new problem to come? So you add to the list. <laughs> and so this only take minimum an hour because yeah. it's conversation. Sometimes it goes sideways and production tells you like, wait, wait, guys, you will fix that later. <laughs> I just needed to know if it was done or not. Okay. So you know that we were doing that on um, Oh yeah, okay. uh, yeah, our project together. Uh, can we speak about it? I think so. Yeah, uh, so Jungle you can Cruise. see the trailer. Yeah. yeah, Jungle Cruise. The trailer is out. Um, I also have a few shots on my reel as well. Like yeah, three. true. Yeah, I've seen <laughs> so, that. So um, I think that's okay. That that's really <clears throat> when Arvid and I bonded closer together. Was during that show. We were sitting to each other, next to each other, and we were both lead on the show, helping the the team. And Eric was on it too, as an Eric artist. Eric was on it too. <laughs> um, so um, I don't know where I was going with that. Um, but yeah, every morning, uh, Arvid and I would go to that room with all the VIPs of the show <laughs> and hearing what was the progress of their task and ourselves telling that's where we were on our show. So this takes me a lot of time because <laughs> after I spend at least an hour on that meeting, yeah. I come back to my desk, I note what is important to me during this meeting and I start contacting all those leads. I said, oh. so why is it not done? Is <laughs> it because you need time or is it because something is blocking the road? Yeah. Uh, I mean, the car on the road. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's all about me trying to be the one um, with the sweeper removing the, the, the sand in the mechanism. Why is it blocked here? Yeah. Oh, sorry, I moved the, the desk. No, that's okay, um, I can move the desk. So uh, I consider okay. myself the guy trying to remove the dust and the sand who was blocking the mechanism to like keep yeah. holding all together. Yeah, and Eric also says, thanks for the notes and uh, for the coffee breaks. <laughs> I wish we had more. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, thank you back, um, right? Yeah. And, and because the, since I left ILM, like learning a new job is very difficult. Learning a new team, being in a new place, all of this was straining my energy. And every day I was missing ILM because it's, mm -hmm. ILM was actually fairly comfortable. You know what you're doing, you yeah. know the software, the people you interact with, you make them friends over time. Yeah. So I, I never regretted my move because that was something I prepared for quite some time before leaving. But every day I was missing my, my days at ALM. I still do. Yeah, uh, like we, we had some like good friend time at work as well. So like all this bonding stuff is quite important in a company, I would say. And now due COVID, you don't have nothing of that. And that is, I think, for me personally, a big problem that you don't have that one to one personal interaction. Obviously, yes, we do. We just recently did like a Zoom Jeopardy game. <laughs> so we had like 30. 30 people in the chat and one was a host and then we played together a game but it's it's not really the same right? it's not the same you, you need to like cause the eye of somebody and say yeah. hey yeah we are buddies yeah okay. um, and speaking of which if you happen to be in the situation Arvid and I were that is extremely important like we were both lead on the same show it's technically the best way to hate each other. <laughs> it's the best environment to like it's disagree, toxic, not yeah. yeah, being toxic. And first, we liked each other before working each other. We had few interaction a little. <laughs> there is still this Germany <laughs> French thing. <Yeah. laughs> um, uh, we, we happened to be able to communicate and knew each other even before working together. But it, it could have been go very bad ways. And yeah. uh, but. First, we are two nice personality, I believe, really easygoing. And, but I also felt like, uh, not in the wrong way, but I have to put effort on making things work because we are going to sit next to each other for the next eight months making a movie. Yeah. 
not everybody was easy to work with in the show so he was my strength and I wanted to be his strength some way like okay oh, at yeah. least we are not causing problem to each other yeah. and I'm not making your day more difficult and this is something you need to take it as almost as a priority in your work every single day for your career is like make people like you not in a fake way but like oh. that's going to make your own day easier yeah. and people will trust you you will trust people and that's how you define people you hate at work or not it's those people who are not aware of making themselves available and easy to work with that's more important than are you the best at making solving this problem is like no do i want to work with that guy or not <laughs> exactly and you got to spend like the whole length of a project together right and on the show we worked together like we had an end date which let's say was april and then come april oh we pushed it for another three months and then we pushed it again and push it again so you got to make sure that um yeah you just are good colleagues you work together nicely and obviously become good friends and i think we had a pretty good bond there which was nice it, were, it worked very well because yeah. if every single moment of the day can be a challenge to this relationship we had. An artist like Eric on the chat right now has a question and stand up and go speak to Arvid. I would say, well, what the hell? <laughs> Who am I? <laughs> why, why doesn't he speak to me? Like, am I, like, deep inside me, sure. I might lose self confidence or I can start hating Eric for that? <laughs> like, there is so many ways it yeah. goes, there is more go reason wrong. to go wrong than right. Yeah. And the fact that we manage to keep that well is actually <laughs> boom. <laughs> I cry, man. You're, you're the king. <laughs> no, uh, I think what was important, like, just to elaborate on that a bit more, is that um we were just talking a lot about things okay i'm doing this now i'm doing more of the look dev side or i'm doing more of the template side or i'm doing more of the lighting side um and yes someone says uh vivian <laughs> says lots of egos in vfx and it's absolutely right so it's yeah it's there's so many personalities battling each other and then everyone tries to be the best and um i don't know like tries to go up to his career ladder and all these things right it's all yeah a bit challenging so we, we all have, vivian is exactly right we all have egos anyway and it's not just vfx the fact that we are artists right. might make it worse but you have to it's fine to have ego like there is time where maybe like i was like oh i wish those people asked me that instead of arvid it's totally i think it's better to acknowledge it and i have no reason to be mad at harvid for that it's actually if i should be mad it would be to the you have to be fair and be, you have to be mad at the person who didn't come to you not to harvid because harvid is not responsible of the situation so it's fine to have feelings <laughs> you have to be wise enough to be aware of your feeling and acknowledge them at the end of the day yeah and you might be the problem and not the people who made that happen absolutely so yeah. you have to be very mature when we are you have this very difficult situation where we both have the same title on the same show yeah uh i think yeah there is 90 percent of claims to go the wrong way <laughs> yeah, you know, they, yeah. Yeah, we, we were very lucky that uh, we respect each other uh, he has his strength i had none so like we everybody knew they had to speak to arvid and not to me and that worked wonderfully yeah and we we, we <laughs> have said yeah <laughs> yeah 100 i said yeah <laughs> jan was just a silent silent person in the corner no i'm just kidding um so we have a question from rasul and the question to you jan is um, first of all hello thanks uh, for the question um uh, if you could give advice to your junior self what that advice would be like if you would go back in time and what oh. advice would you give yourself like how old are you 50 years ago okay so uh i wouldn't do anything differently i think i had actually the the I, i'm not that smart so if i managed to be cg supervisor it's because i worked and not because like i was like gifted uh, some people are smarter than others so you go faster but let's not forget that yeah. you, you need to work and everything i did was reading tutorial like arvid is doing on youtube videos right now so like swallow a maximum of that wow. and as well i was writing tutorials when you write okay. tutorials i i mean you, you know more than me because you did much more than me but that's where you learn the most because you cannot say shit <laughs> so you're sure of yourself you're sure of what you said and you know it works because you presented to millions potential thousands of people sorry and 
I, I think I learned more when I was creating tutorials. Uh, back in time, the, the compositing software, the fancy one, was called Combustion. It was made by Autodesk. It's, um, it's a Windows version of Flame, which costs millions of dollars. That was um, before Nuke. Uh, Shake was the, yeah. the software, which was not all. That was the only one. Yeah. After Effects was very popular, so it was more layer-based. And Combustion was layer-based, but the new fancy one. And uh, so I decided to learn the software. And the way I did it was by creating a tutorial. I said, I'm going to teach people to do that. I need to know how to do it first. <laughs> <laughs> and that's exactly the weird thing what happens to me too. Like uh, people keep asking me, why do I do tutorials? Why do I do it for free? And honestly, it's it's also for me to stay in shape. Like if you would go to the gym, you always go to the gym to stay in shape. And it's the same for me. If I would not challenge myself and creating new things like tutorials and make sure that when I present them that they are in a professional way and that I'm not talking shit about it, right? Oh, you maybe need to do this or maybe do that. I need to be really confident <clears throat> in presenting and that's why um, when I do a tutorial on YouTube is um, where I'm on point and try to be very accurate. And the thing what I do on Twitch right now is like I, I do stream when I struggle with CG. I do Houdini streams now and stuff like that. And the Twitch side is more of a casual thing for me. So um, yeah, the difference might be if you just read how to do global illumination in a software. Yeah. Oh yeah, I've seen where the guy click. That's one thing. <clears throat> I dare you to go at work and say, hey, I know how to make global illumination. <laughs> it's not because you turned it on at okay. home and it worked that you can apply it. If you do a full shot, a tutorial, you went to the bottom of it. And tomorrow in a conversation at work, you might say like, I think it's time we can do that. I evaluated it and it worked. Yeah. And that will change everything. You, you'll be the guy and people will trust you. I mean, Arvid is a very good example of how doing tutorial and sharing them online has been more rewarding. He hasn't been giving for free. He has been receiving more than giving that way. Yeah. Um, it could be just like um, having having the respect of the people who create software, like people from Autodesk or Foundry, listen to Arvid. First, they open the door and they listen to what they have and it could have a real impact on the future development of the software. Um, and that's more a given than a giving. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah. So uh, it's very important. Um, so uh, what was I saying? So <laughs> what would I do differently? Nothing. And it's okay. because I think I did it well. I worked a lot by learning lots of software. Um, but let's say, how did you, um, being a kid, playing what do French kids play? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. Um, but from that to actually sitting on the computer and doing your first 3D things on the computer, I'm like, how did that bridge happen? Like, how did you get from A to B? Oh, how I started CG? Yeah, likely. Like, yeah. So all my friends, uh, we were all going with our PC. We were doing LAN by the time, like, yeah. uh, like local area network. Uh, <laughs> so we didn't have Wi-Fi and internet. So the only way to play with your friend was actually to take to your massive, up, yeah. you, you take your massive tower, 20 kilo, you put it in the car, your screen, 40 kilo. <laughs> and it was still the old glass <laughs> monitors, yeah. right? Okay. Just moving the monitor was awful. Yeah, it was, was the worst. Yeah. yeah. And um, so all my friends were gathering like this. So I started to do the same because like, I love my friend. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they were playing like World of Warcraft. And I'm very not a gamer. So what I was doing all night is like passing their hard drive, see what's on the network. <laughs> Check all the porn, right? <laughs> yeah, checking all the porn. And once I was done with masturbating <laughs> in front of my friend, oh, yeah, I nice. started to say like, oh, what's 3ds Max? Or like by the time it was called 3ds Studio, something like that. 3ds Studio. 3ds Studio, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Maya. Oh, it wasn't even Maya, it was alias. Alias Wavefront. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, for the nerd part was <laughs> alias Wavefront and uh, Maya was polygonal. And then okay. the yeah. alias and Wavefront oh. joined and make Maya, which was polygonal and nerd. Oh, I see. So that's very <laughs> old. That we are speaking about more than 20 years ago. Uh, Photoshop, all of this. So I downloaded that and while they were, I mean, copied it from the server, not downloaded it, see? <laughs> and while they were playing World of Warcraft and smoking pot, um, 
Yeah, that's a very important part of it. For one reason, it's like I was focusing so much. <laughs> I was smoking and I was like clicking every <laughs> single. Anyway, I was installing Photoshop, 3ds, all of this, and all night long while they were playing, I was fascinated that oh, I can create a sphere, and if I put a sphere onto a sphere, it looked like a snowman. <laughs> and then, without having any idea of what I was doing, I was actually acquiring the knowledge of like. Maybe somebody could have told me that's not the way you create a snowman, but I had no idea. I had nobody Just to tell me, not internet to go check. I did it by myself, and turned out that that was exactly how what everybody was doing. So uh. there is no wrong way of doing it, especially by the time we are speaking 20 years ago. And I started to a few images that I wasn't not too unproud of, and I sent it to magazines like Computer Heart, which are international, and they published me. That's crazy. Uh, wow. Yeah. Uh, so I figured that after they published me, I said, "Oh, I can do a living from it." So uh, by the time I was at the university mm -hmm. and I was learning engineering uh, for production, and production and engineering is very okay. specific. I stopped that. <clears throat> I get my diploma. Stopped that. Went to a movie school. And just to be able to focus for the next two years on doing a movie. And what I'm going to say is like not relevant today because today the schools are very good you should if you can go to a CG school CG school and follow the course do it but by the time it was very bad my teacher I think weren't really better than me <laughs> uh, they were oh, yeah I know 3ds Max I can be a teacher and yeah. but like I knew sometimes more options than them really uh, but what it offered me is like for two years I just focused my life on like making short movies okay And before the end of the two years, I got companies in Paris who asked me to work for them. Oh, that's when was that? What roughly when? what time? Yeah. Oh shit! <laughs> uh, yeah. We are in 2020, so uh, end of the 90s, maybe 98, 99. Sure. Okay. Uh, and one week later, I said one guy so said like, "Hey, we are doing commercial. Do you want to work for us?" And I said, "Yeah, sure." Uh, I didn't finish to pay my school, and said, "We'll pay for your school. Don't worry." Yeah, that's great. Uh, I believe not much people actually. It's not that I was good. I think not many people knew their software. Yeah. And so when you had the ability to make CG for a commercial, they would take you. Like uh, you were very valuable to them. Uh, especially so, at that time. <clears throat> so if it was late 90s, right? Um, I was just starting like with 3D at that time. And I remember that I went to 3D Total on a dial up modem. Oh, and yeah. I was. <laughs> going like there was a genre of arc tutorial where you do like a polygon modeling that's that's a friend of mine yeah really yeah, yeah. he's a french guy yeah it was it's, french yeah yeah and i was hating this tutorial because like he had do so you remember many his name no. michel roger mr2k I, everything was signed mr2k <laughs> I, 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 yeah probably i know that yeah three told so a few in the chat know that too so that's how i started and that was way back re uh, like written tutorials well i'm not going to tell you that <laughs> i teach the guy how to make 3d but we were <laughs> learning at the same time so i was actually learning from you is what you say somehow <laughs> and uh, we were posting together like oh we discovered 3d total to put tutorials so he was a friend we were on the same chat like oh. uh, by back in time it was irc do you know irc yeah yeah the, yeah. Chat, the chat client whatever yeah. it was there yeah. so we were all on irc it was a french channel that we were all the artists it's like discord actually like it's basically discord yeah. but like 20 years ago looking yeah. like command line <laughs> and um <clears throat> so i was living in south of france this guy said we are in paris come come work for us and i accepted and One week later, I was there. I started to help on a Barbie, you know, like the 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 yeah the doll the doll yeah uh, commercial. Ten days later, I come back from work and the TV was on. I was living in a family who gave me a bed, uh, and I saw my commercial on TV. <laughs> that's that must be a problem. I was like right? three weeks ago. I was at school and I had no idea I could make money with it yeah. with what I do. Uh, that was that's my best memory yeah. basically. Um, so, uh, bottom story: just learn and share. Oh. Uh, what sharing is half of the work in in learning. Yeah, I agree. And I also get the question: like, I, I think I briefly touched on it. Why do I do the stuff I do for free? And it's it's because I also want to help people become better artists. Because I was struggling so much to get valuable information on the internet that <clears throat> tutorials are like a, the best source to get better and 
like you had a similar experience in school like i went to a 3d school as well and honestly i was better than the teacher and he could not teach me anything on 3d obviously we did film history and crap like that um but the essential 3d part like like uh, the students came to me and hey can i do how can i do this and it's that it's very important right yeah. like so um spend lots of time sharing plus yeah. in your personal career you'll find out that the people sharing are the people respected and they will be noted for that and promoted. Yeah. So if you want to be one day a leader of CG Soup, it's not because you know more than anybody. It's because you knew and you shared it to the team and, and every trust, deal went uh, up. Um, okay, so we have a question which I almost missed from um, Ole. Hey, Ole. So I just read it off the chat quickly. So um, question for you. Now as a now as a supervisor do you have the feeling that there are bigger gaps between you and your co-workers or artists you are supervising than you will than when you will be still doing shot work um excuse my english blah, blah, blah. so he's asking if there's like a bigger gap now that you are super, like the connection to the artist essentially it's 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 very personal to everybody. To my opinion, my relationship with people is more important than my skill. Yeah. Um, once again, a bit earlier, uh, I was trying not to name it and phrase mm -hmm. it too much, but like we, we faced that issue together. Like the, the people we were interacting with, we didn't, we didn't trust it that much. Yeah. And you don't want that. Um, and the, the guy, was fake in his friendship actually and you yeah. can you can tell that so just be yourself in a very raw way like if you're an ass almost show it you know because people will at least know who you are and will trust you for that so but what's important is like being um the guy that people are not afraid to communicate with uh because at the end of the day it's like it's like things who works doesn't matter they work so it's good so it's the thing who doesn't work. When it doesn't work, you have to know and you have to be phrased by the people and trust you and not afraid to come and say, I don't know. If somebody is afraid of you and don't know how to say, I don't know, you'll yeah. be the one coming and say like, why you didn't tell me, why it's not working. If the guy came to me and told me first, it would have yeah. gone so smoothly and I would have said like, I'm so glad you asked. Let's sit together. I'm not necessarily better, but two brain might help solving the Absolutely, issue. Absolutely, yeah. Um, so be kind, <laughs> yeah. be, be yourself and be kind. You want to be true, you know, like there is nothing worse than somebody fake. Yeah. Uh, don't, 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 don't pretend that you're stupid. <laughs> don't pretend that. Arts? Hey Jan, hey Arid. Um, do you do recruitment interviews? If yes, what are the most important qualities you are looking for in applicants? Do you have any tips? Uh, so any tips? Yes, it's exactly what I said before, like being a supervisor is just be kind and be yourself. Uh, you want a connection to happen during the interview, right? You don't want to have somebody in front of you, which is obviously acting. Yeah. Be everybody will tell. So just be yourself. That's the first thing. What we are looking for, I think, uh, you, did, you, did you run some interviews? No, uh, I didn't. No? no? Okay. No. It's... Um, Eric is on the show right now, and I believe uh, on the, chat, the show yeah. on the chat. And I believe I interviewed him on the show we were working on together. And um, if I remember well, he had some shot of forest, and we were working on a movie called Jungle Cruise. <laughs> so it was contextual. It was like I can see in his demo reel the things that I might need tomorrow. If he didn't do it himself, that doesn't matter. He might have heard about how did they solve that. He was part of a team who worked on it. And that might be enough information I might need if I have a problem. And here I'm thinking like when you have branch growing and you have UVs issue, you might like, do I want it stretched? Do I yeah. want it to open? Do I want it to create frame by frame? Oh, but then is more simpler working? Let's see, maybe the guy, they had this conversation. I might need this knowledge. Yeah. So I'm not looking at, I cannot tell you that I'm always looking at this or that. I'm looking to the contextual movie I'm going to work on in the next six months. Yeah. So it's project based. And I think it's also important to um, try to evaluate uh, the skill set of the person. Like you should, I think when you are in an interview, you should honestly talk about your achievements and That's like, true 
like how you approach and problem solving is I think very important for the the person who's interviewing you they want to see um, your problem solving skills I think that is especially if you are on a technical show you want to see um, how that person would approach a problem like what would his steps be and I think it's important to um, give that information like oh, oh I, then what, a question would be like what did you do on the shot and what problems did you have or what what struggles was in the shot and then as a as being interviewed you would need to explain um, what the challenges was and how you solved the problem and not just say oh yeah I did the lighting I placed the light here and it was looking good I got some feedback from the soup <laughs> and then I just addressed the note so that's probably not what you want to answer you just want to go into detail and tell oh yeah we had some issues with the ref spheres and we had to figure out a way to make them um, match better and so we looked at the set and just explain the thought process behind your shots I think if you are open to answering these uh, questions like that I think everyone is super interested in your work and con would consider you way more yeah also you, you make me think of something we are very aware that when there is a problem you're not necessarily the person who solved it and that's fine we don't always like uh, when there is a team of like 15 writers on the show we know that the 15 of them won't come with a solution you don't have to be always the problem solver so the answer could also be like Oh, yeah. So my lead solved that and uh, this is what we've been able to use from his answer from the solution he had and this is what we applied and at least you understand and we know that you understand what's behind the wood in the solution and that might be enough it's at least you're not just a passive guy which is what you were describing like yeah. I place the light and I waited for a command <laughs> so you don't have to be the genius to come with a tool who fix tools but you have to at least acknowledge that Somebody did that and I understood it was made for this. This is how we solved it all together after by applying his recipe. Yeah. Um, and that's totally fine, at least. And it's better than... Don't show passivity. No. That's basically yeah, that's what we are saying. Here. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we got a follow-up question. Um, how important are descriptions of your work in your showreel? I think he's talking about the... Um what, what you did on the I never, I never put one breakdown in <laughs> breakdown, my life. That's what I was uh, looking for. Yeah, that's the breakdown word you're yeah. looking for. Uh, I never did one in my life. Um, here is the thing. For lighting, it's very obvious what you did. If you were a texture artist, a look dev artist, if if you are a modeler, I want to see the, 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 the wireframe. When you're a lighter, yeah. what are you going to show? Like, hey, that's my IBL, that's my son. Okay. I, had, <laughs> I could guess it from the final result. So specifically to lighter that we both are here i'm not sure that what to show in the breakdown i'm almost going to start showing compositing you yeah. know what it's like and i don't when you light you don't composite that much no i mean exactly. it's adding the light together but like uh, we tend not to use the um, what i call the, the component of a shader we tend to just play with the intensity of the light yeah if the shader has to be tweaked like people you know render like all the paths like spec diffuse bump normal and they start to bend that in their compositing software. I think that's mean the look dev was wrong in the first place. You're not supposed to fix yeah. that at the end. Go. It's give that to the compare for like the last yeah. 5%. Don't do that to achieve the image you want. Yeah. So uh, breakdown for lighting, it's a no-no thing. Um, for any other department, if you think it's relevant to show how it was done to your task. <laughs> Sorry, I should look here. <laughs> yeah. um, then do two things the video which is fun to watch and the breakdown which could just be a pdf with the time code saying yeah. hey put also a thumbnail of the shot so we don't have to look at like two minutes one second and three frame to know which one you're speaking about put a thumb a thumbnail yeah. and put what you said or do a video if it were showing passes of what you did but don't include any breakdown in your in your reel. Raw demo reel, yeah, in yeah. your reel. Um, because that's something um, I find, like, I see light or reels in general, not comp reels, comp reels are different again, but lighting reels that people do like these over the wipes, right? Um, and I don't think it should be in your reel unless you do a breakdown reel. That is a different thing. So if you want to apply, you will show them probably your reel to get invited and then you can also like bring with you the breakdown reel where you say, okay, yeah. um, for that essential shot, I did this and that. Is it possible that we say that because we are actually senior? 
If you're a modeler and you don't have much experience yet, Maybe. things to show. And all you did so far, your, most of your experience is modeling you've been doing at home. So you, you don't have content, is that what you you're saying? Well, yeah. you don't have enough to fill even 30 seconds. And once you show a modeling doing a 360, you have to show the wireframe straight away. Yeah. So it's, it's a good, good point, actually. Yeah, I don't actually, it's that. because we are senior. Also, I was going to say, and it's part of the answer here, I don't have breakdown because I'm not supposed to have access to the paths uh, that have been rendering as a lighter. I'm so, all I am supposed to have is the final result given by the company to be able to put it in my demo reel. If you have actually all the paths, that means you stole it to your company. <laughs> you actually found a way to export it, putting on a it's USB <laughs> a good... and bringing home. And that's highly illegal. Um, so be very careful of what you bring home and what you show because you might tell to your next employer that you've been able to steal to your previous <laughs> employer. Yeah, be it's important. very wary yeah. at that. So I don't think breakdown is that important. If you do one, don't include it in the reel and make sure it's just personal work or thing that is allowed to be shown. Like, it's actually, yeah, a breakdown, is, you're not supposed to have those things, even companies are. Well, well, sometimes companies do make their own breakdowns. That's different. And, and then you can take those. Yeah, that's different if the company put it on YouTube and you see your shot, well, take it. It's fine. If it's not public, don't do it. You're gonna lose your job and lose your future job. Like, you give a very wrong signal to your employer. So uh, we will be just doing a very quick break here. And I, in the meantime, I'm just showing you Jan's showreel. So it's from last year, I believe. Yeah, uh, so actually I'm working on a TV series since now 10 months, which is obviously not in Netflix yet. And the movie we were working on has been lasting almost a year and a half prior to leaving ILM. So my latest work is Bumblebee, which is very old. Okay, so <laughs> I'm just playing this now. Am I, am I supposed to comment? So this was the first part and I hope you got some really insightful information and also make sure to follow me on Instagram to get updated news and whenever I update new videos everything you will be notified via Instagram and also we have a Discord community which is almost 2000 strong so be sure to check it out and join the community. So let's keep going and find something more out about Jan. And good looking show I've been working on was Gravity. Okay. Yeah. I mostly had outdoor shot, not in the ISS. I had few inside the ISS, it's a different story. But when it's outside, it looks fabulous. Oh, yeah. I, love I, it. I have one light. <laughs> I have the sun. Yeah, I that's have what the it sun is. and even the earth is a source of light, but we just placed a card 
and leaving the global illumination take the amount of luminosity it's supposed and to bounce around to, yeah. yeah to to bounce to, to i mean it was direct illumination right but like because i think it was a surface shader or something like this but it, not a light <laughs> per se like uh, so it's just one light um, Sometimes it's it's really that like keep it simple, right? And it, it works better. Like I've seen shots where people place like thirty lights to light one character, and it just it just way too much, yeah, right? Something uh, like that. Yeah. Well, let's say it it looks fabulous. If somebody give you a nut, you're doomed. Yeah. Like like the, yeah. the the recipe is a fine balance of thirty light. If you move one, well, the, the puzzle is discontinued. <laughs> yeah. So go simple, and that's enough. Um, but yeah, gravity, because in space there is just the wow. sun, there, yeah. there, there is nothing complex. Um, what was challenging is like one of my shots was like 35,000 frames. I think it's 12 minutes, if I'm not wrong, something it, like it's this. It's a beginning shot? It's, the, it's called the drift. Okay. So it's like it has been hit and she's losing herself. Oh, yeah, yeah. She goes very far from the camera, then come back clo closer. Sorry. Sorry. Um, so. And she had to look at some point like the camera is close to her face, almost inside the helmet, and goes yeah, back. Okay. And it's sunsetty. And you see reflections. I mean, sunsetty. Yeah. That's the thing. It's like during the shot, I think I have three or four sunset because the, the sun is rotating fast around the and earth. And the ISS is space. going yeah. around the earth as well, right? And so we, we had to look good in all conditions under everything, every angle. And so I was allowed to cheat the sun position to be sure it always looked good. Well, you think like, hey, yeah, and that's freedom, that's cool. Well, when you start animating the sun and you don't want people to see that the sun is animated, mm -hmm. it's a nightmare. Uh, Every move you make starts to be like as complex as having 30 lights. Yeah. Like, oh, but here they will see the shadow. And I have, when she comes back in position, <laughs> I have to have the sun where it's supposed to be. <laughs> and because I see the earth is in plain light, so she cannot be rim light at the sun. Everything has to be coherent oh, totally. together. Oh my God, it was like a maze. Like, I would not understand my own shot sometime. Think like, why did I put a key on my sunlight at this time? It doesn't make sense. And if I, it might make sense, so I would delete the key. Yeah. And two days later, I was like, that was for this reason that I had it. <laughs> <laughs> it was very challenging. That, uh, I had a notebook just for one shot, putting every note to, to remember why I did what, because after this mistake, I remember like, uh, I won't make the mistake I twice of not knowing why I did something. <laughs> <laughs> so we do have another question, Mr. Dupont. <laughs> That's very. I am not that old. <laughs> uh, when you are seeking new artists, uh, do you think the vice, the sorry, the visa process and its surrounding bureaucracy and expenses deter you from hiring foreign artists, or is that really the worry of upper management? That's actually from the, the call from a company to another um, company. Well, first. We can speak for Vancouver here. When I arrived in Vancouver, it was eight years ago. It was still in the beginning of the booming of Vancouver as the, the main hub for VFX in the world. So we didn't have any enough artists. Company, like I went to, my first company was Sony. They put money for relocation, for uh, all the costs with the lawyer for the visa. They covered everything. I didn't heard about any of that. Like everything was taken care of. Now that there is enough artists in town, they are not going to spend any dollar, yeah. I think, because there is enough turnover and they will find within a week enough artists downtown. Yeah. Um, and then it also differs from a company to another. Like a company like Sony has money and is willing to put money uh, on the table to have you. If it's a bit of a smaller company, um, let's say like still a very good company, like Imagine Engine, for example. It's a very good company, they make AAA movie. Uh, they still don't have the money that Sony has. And they might be like, okay, I'm not going to pay for your plane ticket. I don't know, maybe it's the case. I'm just saying that from a company to another, it's this different. differ a lot. And, and I, I, if you can afford it, and if the contract is not just three months, if you come here in Vancouver, for example, and you know that it's at least six months or more, I would say, okay, if you have the money, put it on the table because it's an experience that will bring you another job behind and it's usually it's an investment. Um, so um, I'm, I'm not sure I answer the question very well, but um, uh, 
I think I would make if if I know that I, I need this experience. Like for example, I never worked in a big company before, and Dineg is willing to recruit me, but I have six thousand dollars of expense which is on my own. If maybe I will call my parents if I don't have the money and say like trying to convince them. I said, look, if I have once an experience with Dineg, first they might keep me much longer. But two, after other company will hire me because of this in my CV, it worth the investment. Yeah. Uh, it's a tough call, like because it's money here. I don't know your your situation, uh, and it's soul crushing if you can't afford it. Um, it. It's one of these things where investing a dollar might return to. Yeah, no, that's that's really true. Um, what I do think, though, due to COVID, now that everyone is working from home, I see quite a few companies already offering uh, remote work. So they actually do hire people uh, globally and they can work from home and a company. Do you want else. me to share a secret <laughs> right now, a cool secret? <laughs> I'll do it if you, if you, if you are in under NDA or whatever. No, no, it's fine. Um, it, it's just, there is nothing that secret. It's just not, not, not known yet. Uh, but um, Weta is willing to hire you remotely. I, yeah, it's not a secret. No, anything. it's not yeah. secret secret. It's just not very popularly yeah. known yet. And some people, like if my ex-partner, my ex-girlfriend didn't tell me, I wouldn't yeah. know. Okay. So, as simple as that. Like uh, because of COVID, I'm fairly disconnected from all conversation, sure. right? <laughs> I'm, I'm not at, in the office where everybody share things. So I just heard it accidentally. Yeah. Also, and this is more famous, they're opening an animation studio soon. Yeah. So I don't know when they will ramp up, but there is potential of hundreds of jobs being able to work from home. Which is amazing. And I know that Skyline, Skyline is doing it as well already. So you can be anywhere in the world, you can apply at Skyline and they will give you a contract uh, working from home so that is I think this is where the industry will go and yeah. COVID was just a um, like a petrol in the fire is that how you would say it like it we'll see it's difficult to predict the future I have difficulty oh. to imagine that we stay like this but if it's the case and it's showing that we can it's wonderful that yeah. that, that will solve all those issues but I, I do believe that Shit, we need to sit next to each other, you know, <laughs> like I, I do miss that and it's important. My, my only fear is like, but maybe it's old people speaking here. Uh, imagine you're a coder and um, you can work like company like Microsoft or Apple are very different in their philosophy. The day you work from home, how do you defer a company to another? There is no more philosophy. There is the architecture, the mood in the office, uh -huh. the, the choice, like where they are in the city. All of this define a company and a culture they've been trying to build forever. The day you work from home, this doesn't oh, exist. Yeah. So you don't give a shit if you are working for Apple, Microsoft, Amazon. Well, same, I'm just doing my code from home. That's sad. Yeah. I really hope at some point we'll go back to the office. But to your question, it's an opportunity right now for yeah. foreign people who need to have a, um, a work permit in different yeah. countries. Exactly. Um, what else? Well, first of all, we got a new sub, which is Jordi. Thank you very much for the subscription here on the channel. Much appreciated. We love you very much. <laughs> we love you too. I love you too, yeah. <laughs> um, um, what is probably mostly looking for seniors right now, right now, they surely can't use a junior working from home. What do you say to that? I'd say... It's true. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I don't know what's the intention, uh, uh, what they are doing. I have no idea. But if I was an employer, I would be very scared of the productivity of a junior that I cannot supervise all day. Like yeah. it, you need mentoring. And it's not like, like looking behind your shoulder. You, you need somebody, uh, you, usually lots of company as a mentoring thing, it's like they might, if I'm new to a company where Avid works, they might ask Avid, to, they might make me sit next to him and ask him like do your job but like keep an eye you'll be the one we told That's him right. that he can ask you question all day this is very important if you don't have that uh, beginning in a company is fairly difficult you know um, so junior right now might be a fragile position to yeah. get but that being said companies still need junior I mean there is a reason why we have junior is like your salary is lower which is important when you cannot pay just for senior. And two, not all the shots deserve a senior. So it's actually an awesome system. We give you bad shot, we give you bad shot, like simple shot. So you learn, 
and you have a, a way to learn and show your skills and show your independence and so that's how you become a mid artist and then a senior so th there is no insult here it's normal that you have a lower pay and not all shots deserve a highly paid senior so they will still need that uh, it's just it, yeah it will be difficult though like because if, if i'm a junior going to a company i need someone who is next to me that's what you said right and you if don't you don't have to, that you don't yeah. know where to click you yeah. should be so lost you really need a mentor at the beginning um so i don't know how they are going to solve that that's actually very difficult question you're asking us like uh, I, i'm pretty sure that they are all wondering the same thing and they don't have an answer yet how to get into the world of 3D as a beginner what should I focus on I want to work in gaming or film industry okay if you are at the very very beginning just touch everything like create a model as simple as it is of a character uh, do the texture do the shader animate it so it has a small walk cycle or just climbing a cube render it composite it so you've seen all the department then wonder which one you had fun working on and that's where you're going to focus um, and whether you want to work on the movie or the video game it's kind of up to you it's um, if you want to be very pandemic style go video game because that uh, will never die yeah we are true. like right now I Arvid and I are depending on how the actor wants to go on set or can go on set yeah. anywhere so we could run out of work very quickly right now and video game or animation won't have this issue but that being said uh, I have no answer w which industry you should prefer but just try all the department of a simple very simple scene and see which one you had fun if not fun comfortable oh I found this very easy well don't think it's easy because it's easy maybe it's easy because you are gifted for that so focus on that if it was easy for you to do shader Build, uh, uh, build a matter like a library of shader and show what you can do. Oh, if you had fun with animation, well, focus on that. Like, you, you, but the only way to know it's to touch to every single department. So build a small scene. Question mark. Well, they, they, as you said, they like weather as now as well. At least they did, they did announce it um, officially now that they do have a um, light uh, what is it? stagecraft right thing as well. Yeah, that's true. Um, I think they also just did that because they see oh ILM does lots of like advertisement for their stagecraft thing and they get so many jobs now right that but they said oh shit we got it we actually have this like 20 years ago we already have that thing but if that teach you something well be a lighter the good old-fashioned way but don't lose an eye on what are the new technology totally, yeah. because I hear so many people complaining about AI machine learning I was like, well, you're not going to stop the machine. You'd better go on the train than go looking at it. <laughs> so like be very yeah. open minded and don't think that the machine is going to replace you. Be the one able to cut the machine if necessary, but don't. That's what I keep saying people too. like uh, talking to friends. Um, they say, oh, yeah, at some point um, I will be redundant because AI will do my uh, Photoshop skills or whatever. Right. And it's probably true. It will happen that your job right now will be um, erased from a computer but you still got to adopt and you got to um, develop yourself as well you need to try new things and I, I don't, you you need to embrace that technology that's a sample essentially also why I do tutorials you you got to embrace the information and use that information and get better with that and and if you do tutorial the company making a switch on AI might contact him and say can you be the tester of this new tool and how would you make it better yeah. you want to be part of those guys and yeah. not the one being victim of the situation and um, right now there is the um, I, I have a friend who was the, the founder of Algorithmic, uh, who did a painter designer mm -hmm. and now work for Adobe and you might know their latest software which is project alchemist and it's yeah. partly based on machine learning and AI and that doesn't mean it does the work instead of you. That means it processes a lot with better quality at like live. And that if something, it, you should look at it like a way to be faster, make a bigger project and being having more time for creativity instead of like, oh, I made it work good enough. I stopped there. No, like now you can make it work in one second. So just improve yeah. the quality or do more. Look at it that way. 
and in lighting it's coming um oh yeah i, I, I won't I, make I, a secret i'm <laughs> working very hard with like some company I, I don't want to go too far in my own secret future like <laughs> i wish i dream of it's like but i i can see that machine learning helping us a lot as later yeah and i'd rather be the one having an idea than saying like this shit took my job yeah uh, be part of it I, totally and i remember when we were working on um, on our previous show that we were checking out the nvidia painting thing oh right? yeah yeah that's exactly what can what actually I, try to pull it up, but you can expand quickly what it does. You... So there is this, um, I think it's no secret that Nvidia now is the most advanced company for um, um, computer graphics using AI. And because at the end of the day, they don't care about AI, they care about selling graphic card and their graphic card are the best one to accelerate AI, um, AI computation i don't know what's the word is that the correct word yeah it yeah. is so anyway they are willing to give you wonderful tool that uh, arvid is showing you right now everything is for free the, the, all the invest in their code is just because behind the only way to accelerate those tools is to use their graphic card that being said keep an eye on what nvidia is doing this tool here <laughs> is able there it is with some very simple brush stroke color coded like hey yellow is sand and uh, green is forest and blue is sky is by seeing big pattern not big pattern big shape on the image that harvid is going to paint <laughs> i can't make it larger unfortunately um, um so I, I believe that we need to differ what's ai and machine learning i don't think this is ai no. or machine learning is a part of ai look at it but that's i think he has been trained by humans here to say like hey when i see pictures which is half divided horizontally with sky and water those 100 pictures answer to this definition and yeah. it has been teaching that way how, uh, how what, things are yeah. how how it looks when you divide an image into two with the bottom being water and the height being sky. That's the machine learning part. And now it's going to paint random um, materials with brush stroke. And the machine learning is going to try to incorporate piece of pictures that might work, answer the best to that definition. And this is very simply explained where it always been very bluffing to Arvid and I is when you use water and you see reflection in the water of what you've been painting yeah. above. This is mind blowing. Um, so what you're looking at, what, what's, re what's really fun actually that we did was uh, sometime trying to mimic a picture that we've seen on the web. Uh, so find a nature image and try to mimic it just with brush stroke like this you'll be very surprised by the result. look at that it's yeah. so i just painted a mountain on the left and we still have the water horizon and i just added a few clouds right and then um you already see the uh, outcome it's and you have different kind of themes as well and I, that's what i was going at is it's a it's essentially um what would make our life easier like because we could do these kind of style frames and um, let's see if we get this right. I mean, you can be as afraid as you want that the machine will replace you. Yeah. The reality is like, it's already there. It's already been so different in the last 20 years that I'm working since 20 years in the industry. So I've seen the change where like tools is doing my job that I usually do manually. Yeah. Look at UVs. UVs used to be like a week or two for a full character if you want clean UVs. Well, now there is software, you click one click and the UVs are perfect. Look at ZBrush, you know, yeah, like the, I, doing the job of, a, of modeling that you usually you would paint the bum detail. Now you model them. That's yeah. it. So all of this here, did it took your job? No, it made movies saying like, hey, we can go with like, now we can put three elephants instead of one because the guy can model three elephants in the time that he was doing one before. It just has been allowing us to do more yeah. and better. Exactly. So so far, maybe one day it will replace your job. We are not there yet. We no. need you. Don't worry. Uh, we have a question from H Matthews one ninety. I don't want to speak to that guy. <laughs> no, who's that guy? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, 
Hi, Yana Navid. Um, I am a 3D artist from India. I want to improve my skill in look dev. What would you say I should be? Uh, what What would you say I should focus on, or in other words, be like? I think he's saying, what should I focus on to become a better look dev artist? And that's one question. And then the other one is, what is your thoughts on GPU render engines, especially Octane Redshift compared to a CPU render engine? Um, can we answer the second yeah, question first? Yeah, second first. Um, I think GPU are much better than CPU. They are the future. So far, the only problem is creating a render farm out of GPU. Expensive. Yeah. Uh, the, the day we lower the cost and we are able to create blade, like bay of blade for a render farm, which are just GPU based. So you don't spend much money because so far you still need a motherboard and a processor to communicate with the GPU, you know? So, yeah, I mean, yeah. at least something. And you still need a CPU to transmit the data as well. That, that, that's yeah, yeah. it, yeah. And there is the memory is still an issue with GPU. The day we solve those uh, technical issues, I, I think don't, GPU I, will be the... I don't think there's an issue. Like you can have RTX 8000 cards without 48 gigs and you can link them. You can link up to okay, four so or five. it used to be an issue. It used to be an issue. <laughs> I think the bottleneck is the price. It's super expensive. Yeah. But then if you look at those Bitcoin farms, they have tons of RTX cards and they just harvest these Bitcoins. Right. Yeah. yeah. So it does exist. It's just very expensive and you need to see um, what the return is. Yeah. So the, the answer to your question is those renderers are awesome. The problem is they are awesome at home only because no company had the bollocks to implement them to make yeah. their movies. No one wants to make the first step. Right, yeah, well. exactly. I mean, I see lots of small companies in Vancouver who does commercial for TV or whatever. They use Redshift. No problem. They yeah. don't care. There, there is no incidence on that. There is three artists with that. Yeah. If you're at ILM, you need the support of Renderman and somebody to knock at the door saying, are you going to exist in five years from now because I'm investing on your yeah. engine? So that, but that being said, that doesn't mean Redshift is not as good as Renderman. Maybe it's better. It's just we are big elephant with very slow move and yeah. every um, decision could cost thousands of dollars. That's why they never make the move to, to other engine. Now, what was the first uh, question? Oh, yeah. He's a look dev artist and he wants to improve his skill. You, should, dev. you should answer that more to me. <laughs> You're the look dev guy. Yeah, I, I can totally try to. So look dev essentially means surfacing or it's actually a bit different, but look dev means the development of an object. And what what is very important is to make the object believable. And that is the challenge I face every day and we face at work every day that the objects you present in CG, they always look fake or uncanny and all these things, right? So my best advice for that problem would be to have references. And I can't stress it enough, like references are the key. You, you um, always need to make sure that whatever you do in CG is represented in the real world, right? So um, whenever I do look dev on the professional side, I'm not talking about tutorials now, um, then I always have Google open. I always have my uh, mood board with, um, with reference images and I do really analyze the surface. Like um, how is the light reflecting? Like how is there micro displacement on that surface? And if I don't have good references, I just Google for um, my microscopic details of a surface like wood close up yeah, or, or, yeah. or macro of wood and stuff like that <clears throat> and then you see that like a big misconception is that people are changing specular intensities and changing um, the roughness values and specular intensity in the shader and roughness are just two um, attributes which help the render achieve a good result but it's, it's essentially faking physicality of the object so what I try to incorporate more and more is I have everything on one um, like fully like when you at least when you start out like let's say you make a metallic surface or something like that <laughs> <laughs> um, you do want to um, have it <laughs> it's very distracting <laughs> it um, let's say you want to make wood but when you look at wood uh, it's very dry and rough looking so your first intention would be to increase the roughness to make it look rough but if you zoom close enough, you will see that the wood is actually highly specular. It's reflecting everything um, in all angles. So what you want to do is actually just make sure that you have either a very strong bump map or a very strong displacement map and then use roughness to, to help the render engine slightly. Um, that would be one tip I, I can give you is, is that the shaders right now, they are just there to help 
mimic reality, yeah. right? A, a lot of it is like, in reality, Lambert diffuse doesn't exist. Yeah, it's an extremely roughly spec. <laughs> yeah. That's true, right? Yeah. Um, so that being said, like, don't, don't take it the, the 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 raw way by saying like, oh, it, everything is supposed to be spec at one. And if I need it rougher, I'll just use bump, like in reality, because roughness, as you said, like help you achieving the result in a much faster way. But just don't forget how it was to, supposed to be. That's true that it was supposed to be just by alteration of every normal altogether. Uh, I remember uh, a look dev supervisor at ILM telling me that uh, he, for him, good quality look dev was 90% of the quality of bump and roughness. Yeah. Yeah. If that were, and that's true actually, most of the CG I don't like, it's the shitty bump response, you know, where you can see the, the fake uh, light side and dark side of a bump. You're like, you, yeah. <laughs> that's not working. Um, so yeah, all I can say for look dev, um, uh, yeah, reference is super important. That's for sure. And um, make sure to look at other renders. Obviously, what I what I also can recommend is do not um, take other renders and try to copy them. Like, let's say you want to do a CG glass, don't look for other CG glasses and use them as reference. That is a very bad idea because you don't know um, if whatever you look at is real. So I could always just say take a picture of something and replicate that. Um, so that's probably one advice um, and keep doing like it's it's like you when you draw it's it's you need to practice it every day make sure that your environment you do the look dev in is a correct environment it does not help if your sun is blue and then you want to make something yellow and then everything gets green right you, yep. you got to make sure that you're working in a neutral environment um, to get a correct that, that is very bag. important like you should a very basic thing would be maybe creating a studio lighting yeah. that every time you're going to work on look dev you're going to use the same lighting set your eyes will get used to it and also you can compare a material to another under the same lighting condition that that's actually how we work it's like where uh, in a company when you work on a new character on a new prop you always start in the same generic lighting scene yeah because that's the only point of comparison you have is like I those two characters as luminous as vibrant in saturation or whatever also what it describes is the very artistic part of it which is supposed to be 85 percent of the time spent keep a bit of time when you're tired at the end of the day and trying to find if there is any and those information are difficult to find but like if there is new research on how shade shaders oh, are being paper written, right yeah papers yeah. it's like I always I never know where to find those information and like sometimes you speak with somebody like Arvid and say oh it's because the spec algorithm is very bad now there is the new Beckman and I was like who the fuck is Beckman <laughs> yeah. well he's most likely a scientist or GGX um, yeah. yeah who has been analyzing the way metallicity is working and then in fact the spec is written differently or the end response of like I don't know how to say the the disk of a spec as a worksheet and so we can mimic that in the computer and without you being better the render will look better yeah. so try to keep an eye as well because somebody one day you might be in charge of decision and you're not just good at making um, a good shader you're also good at taking decision of what technology to choose yeah. And then also, what is similar to what Jan was saying, be sure to be up to date with the software you're yeah. using. So obviously, lots of viewers on my YouTube, they say, oh, I don't have that setting. Why, why, why? Right. And then it's important for you guys to be up to date because especially for Arnold, like Renderman does not update that frequently, I think. Yeah. Um, but Arnold does like at least one update a, a month and you get always new features and new updates and bug fixes. So it's important to stay on on um, on the latest release and also what the story is saying random walk 2 is a new ray trace subsurface scattering algorithm which is also um, way better than the v1 it has more accurate and very thin areas so be sure to always so read where about do this. you find random walk is it an arnold it's an it's it's not now other companies adopted that it's a paper okay it's an open it's an open paper and arnold was the first i think to implement that 
and it's just a better algorithm to mimic how light transport is within an, a medium. And it's fully ray trace. Yeah, fully okay. ray trace. I mean, there is no approximation by saying I just compute two rays and I no, average. They do have the, they do have the diffusion model which does it, but they do have so the fusion ra random walk and random walk two. They have the two new ray tracer okay. ones. Awesome. Um, and be brute force. <laughs> brute force it. Yeah, that's like that's the thing. Uh, Redshift is not brute force. Um, Arnold is. So people always say, oh, Redshift is so better and so faster. It is fast, no doubt. I get that. I have Redshift as well. It's fast. I love it. Um, but if you want to go for hyper real, I still say brute force is the way. And Arnold is one of the better brute forcers out there. Yeah. Well, if you wonder how this Unreal uh, 5 demo was so good at making GI. It's because the only few explanation they give is the geometry is virtualized, which I understand it as it's able to take any LOD. Explain you know, that quicker. <laughs> yeah, uh, a level of detail. So you see millions of polygons, but maybe uh, for lighting purpose, behind the hood, they are using a model which is like, I don't know, 200 polygons. And then they make a lighting and they average the value on a few areas. And that's enough to have a very good GI. So you don't like brute forcing million. If we can do it without 100 hours, like Epic is not going to do it in real time. They've been cheating somewhere. And that's what um, is brute force versus versus what? Um, uh, bias, um, bias, uh, bias, bias render. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we do have a, uh, first of all, uh, thanks everyone for the, all those questions. So and much questions. So many yeah, questions. Very cool. Uh, feel free also to ask more questions because we will be wrapping up uh, very soon. So we have maybe 10, 15 more minutes. So be sure to pop in your questions if you have any um, um, yeah, ideas. And also just um, a bit of a promotion on my side. I do offer mentorship on my Patreon channel. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, no, I know. You, you use me for making money. I want half of yeah. the money. <laughs> you, you, we talk offline. <laughs> Um, so I do have this Patreon stuff and obviously if you want to support me, I would be happy um, to see you over on Patreon. Um, you don't obviously need to sign up for anything. I'm just um, just mentioning it. Like, mentioning it. Anyways, question. Wait, actually, I don't know. You don't have to do it, but if you guys are in Vancouver and one day to go have a coffee or a beer, we can try sometime to have a CG meetup. Oh, that's actually a brilliant idea. Yeah, yeah. we can do that. I mean, like, um, I, I cannot, like, uh, it's a bit tricky to offer that because it's a commitment, so I cannot offer to do it all the time. But it's, it's cool, like... Um, if you think that we can help a way or another and maybe we might actually also like have benefit of meeting you guys that would yeah. be fun if yeah. you're up for it i'm up for it for sure that would be in, um, yeah do it. that's a great idea um so we do have um <laughs> a question here which is again for an interview lighting interview question from um ss mac x woo woo <laughs> Uh, Sounds like a super villain. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so in the interview, he, or I'm not sure he or she, um, gets asked the question, um, why the why don't you know about Redshift or V-Ray? Um, but the person has experience with Brendan and Arnold, and the question is, but why don't you have experience with Redshift and V-Ray? And then he does not feel confident in answering this question. Do you have any advice, like how you would approach a question like that? Well, I, I'll be honest, I think it's a douchebag question. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but that being said, maybe the guy didn't care about Vire, didn't care about the answer itself more than what, how you would justify. Because the good answer is like, man, if you know a bit about Renderer yourself, there is almost no difference between Vire, Arnold, and Renderman nowadays. They all shifted to a brute force render. It's even Retro. Is this, the, the, yeah. like, if you check the settings from Retro to Arnold, they... I, I, one to one essentially yeah so you could argue the good answer to me would the guy be like they're so similar i have no reason to spend time on yeah. the wing where is the button it will be f easy and quick enough to adjust in the company i'm working with tomorrow yeah. in the meantime i'm just uh increasing my skills on knowing how to get the best of those renderers and how to be a good lighter yeah uh, exactly and i think you, you you can be very confident about it just just say um, that you you 
you don't even have to lie but you can just say that nowadays all the renders are very similar they all all strive to be physically accurate and they they all do share a very similar algorithm so for you, for me to learn a different render engine is no problem at all because it's it's essentially just a different name for that button right it's yeah. it's all the differences there is but th there is a chance that the guy was not that i mean it's a douchebag question but maybe he just wanted to hear that from you and he doesn't believe himself that you should have take time to learn vire maybe yeah. he just wanted to see how you'd react to that how you feel about different render engines yeah, yeah. um and think about something very important uh, and, and it's the most difficult when you go to an interview is like those people are not superior to you your answer might actually surprise him and tell him how stupid he is compared to you. So if the guy really thinks that you should have taken time to learn Vire and you remind him in front of everybody that nowadays all the renderers are the same fundamentally, he will feel stupid about himself <laughs> and you will shine this moment. Yeah, exactly. So don't don't be a douche yourself, but being a bit assertive and confident here yeah. in why you did it. That's the good answer is being able to justify why you did it and not the, yeah. the, the VRA itself or whatever, you know, like, yeah. And then leading up to that question, do you think um, it is important in an interview to, to sleep, <laughs> to sleep, uh, feel tired, no, um, to be, um, to be, uh, to have references from previous employers or soups and showing them, oh, um, I have a reference from this guy from that company he said, oh, I'm so an awesome person. Would you, as an, as interviewing someone, would you find that important that you have valid, credit, creditable references? No, um, I, I never had, I, I had few reference and it happened that I, I, I asked for reference. I think nobody care about, I mean, okay. We are friends with Arvid and let's say it's not that good. That is very good. That's not the case. It's not that good. And he's asking me a reference. You really think that I'm going to write a letter saying Arvid sucks is my friend. I'm going oh. to write good things about you. The only time that reference have been given to company has been checked was by the legal department. Like big companies like Weta, Sony have lawyers checking if you didn't cheat on your CV. That's the only time that reference has been used in my yeah. in my experience. It like did nobody care if they were friend enough with you to write a good review. I really believe in that. The only thing who might pay off for you is like, have you stayed a long time in a company? If yes, that means you were not disappointing. That means people cared about keeping you long enough. Have you been promoted in within a company? That means a lot more than anything else. Like, I don't, you can come with 10 references saying you're awesome. If I see that in the past five years, you've been in 50 different companies. Yeah. I think it's very cheesy and fishy and it doesn't smell good. If you were good, you would, the company would have done her best to, to keep, keep you along. Yeah. And that's the only thing who matters to me is saying like how stable you've been in your career. Yeah. Yeah. I, I totally agree with that. Like I see lots of um, uh, profiles on LinkedIn where they say, oh, I was three months here, three months there, and they are proud of it, but it's it's not something to be proud about, I no. think. Because that just shows what Jan said, that the company was not happy with you, otherwise they would try to keep you. Otherwise, like um, what I meant to say is if you have obviously personal issues and you got to move or something, like move from different cities, and that's why you have different jobs or whatever, that's totally legit, but... Um, if, yeah. you, if you just work for different companies for three months and something is weird, I think about it. There is few time in my career that I wanted to leave and I didn't because I thought it would send the wrong signal on my <laughs> CV. And I've said like, Jan, wait a year before doing a move because that might work against you yeah. here. Yeah. So you do you think it's very important to have a good like record of your employment history for for, for your career? You think that's yeah, important? Yeah, very much so. And um, I, I've, Reference can be very relevant if you've been doing so Being a good guy and a good artist is not good for a reference. A reference could be useful if you've been promoted, if you build a tool and you want something within the company who said, actually, so um, SS Max X03, <laughs> added that to the company. It's a real value that we didn't have before. Well, if you say it in an interview, the guys are not willing to trust you. You might be just showing up. 
if you come with that, it's a real statement of yeah. the reality. That's the only case. It's very rare, actually, yeah. that this would happen. I, I don't believe much in reference. It's like giving kudos on LinkedIn. It's like it's a Facebook like. Yeah. What does it cost? Mm -hmm. Nothing. So then there's a question about our answer, but isn't it very hard to get a, um, a permanent contract for a couple of years? It's it's we are two lucky bastard here. Yeah. It's actually not the norm. Uh, I'm not a contract. Okay, look, it sucks. <laughs> yeah. I'm not in contract either, actually. Okay. I, I, I used to be at ILM, uh, I was lucky, but um, look, first, it doesn't matter. Most of the time, those big companies are in um, uh, North America or in a uh, capitalistic country. <laughs> so uh, being under contract or not, it's like you can be fired within a week if they don't Anyways, want to keep yeah. it. So it's nowhere a stability. It might be a peace of mind, but it's fake. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> um, uh, so, what was the question again? Sorry. The question is like, isn't it hard to get a permanent contract? So it's 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 very rare, but it's not because of you. It's the nature of the industry. If yeah. tomorrow you open your own company, and you know that all you have is a contract with a client to make a movie, which is going to last six months. You're going to hire people for six months. It's not that they don't deserve a full-time contract. Yeah. It's because you have nothing you can promise to them. It's almost respectful to say, for now, all I can give to you is six months. Yeah. If they were willing to make you think that you can get a mortgage because it's like indefinite time, and in fact, they fire you in six months, they are playing a very cruel game on yeah. you. So it's actually almost respectful to know what you can count on. Yeah. And honestly, like talking just for me now, I never ever had a full-time contract in my whole career and I'm doing it now for 12 or a bit more years. And it was always project-based. So most of the time when I was lucky, I had yearly um, project-based contracts, but they all expire. But again, when you sign them, there's always this little paragraph stating that, oh, we can fire you within two weeks. Yeah, they, they will always, and like, I'm not saying it's normal, and it's fun like we all yeah. wish we were very stable yeah. and able to build a family and say like whatever happened i'm here in 10 years i can buy a car and a mortgage for a house whatever i know it's not fun it's just it's the nature of the industry and i don't want to blame my employers for that because i know that themselves have no more visibility than the contract they have for the next two years Oh. They have no idea what's coming. ILM right now is one of the biggest companies in the world. They are backed up by Disney. They have no idea what movie they are going to work on in two years. And if any other company take all the project, they have nothing. Yeah. So I can't ask them to commit to me if they can commit to themselves. That's yeah. in, I can't blame them for that. We have to be fair. No, totally. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, well, but once you have some experience, you also have good chance to find another job pretty quick the best you are the more desirable you are yeah. and yeah uh, but that that's the obvious I'm, yeah. ju I'm just keep in mind that we tend to be hungry at our employer sometime and uh, the movie industry is very weird look um visa menus bankrupt even though they were very successful and they won an oscar the same year uh, and they were making money it's just one bad project has been able to bankrupt them because the people who make money are the production house above like Buena Vista, 20th Century Fox, all of those. Our employer doesn't make much money. They have a one to your visibility, yeah. nothing else. It, it's not Apple. They don't have half trillion of dollar in bank. Um, it, it's very unfortunate. I wish our employer were way richer, but that's not the case. So it yeah. looks like it. That's not at all. So if you have any more questions to Jan, he's at CG Super Zoic right now and he's um, working from home as we all are. So he's very happy to answer any questions in VFX. Like if you have any questions regarding that, it would be um, highly appreciated if you can just ask a few more questions in the chat. Otherwise, we will be slowly rolling out. But if not, then um, yeah. And in the meantime, while um, I'm just here, I do have also an Instagram account where I do have um, quite... Um, I, I do post my social media renders, so <laughs> nice haircut, yeah. Um, and so it's cool if you can just check it out. I think we do have a command for that as well. And so I would highly appreciate if you could um, check it out. And I do do, uh, do live streams on Twitch about Houdini. And look, he's light as a feather <laughs> and he's back. <laughs> 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 
Um, because anyway, keep go read the question. Um, I feel very honored to be. I mean, your family famous person. <laughs> so uh, I would say that. Well, thank you. You're my good friend, but that's not enough. I'm really honored to be here with you, and. Um, the fact that you ask my ask us question feels like I have something to give to the oh, community. Totally. Well, I had no idea, you know, like until it happened. So um, I want to thank you very much. No problem. I'm happy yeah. to have you. And it's it's great that like I think what, because you're an established um, artist, CG Soup, that um, um, it's it's just it's just natural that you you always. You don't see where you're at, really, when, when you're at that position. Well, plus, I, I'm not somebody with a massive ego, <laughs> yeah. uh, but that's my fuel. It's yeah. because I have this Very impost humble, yeah. I, I have an imposter syndrome, which forced me to be humble and work more to try to deserve what I have. Yeah. Um, uh, yes, I'm French. <laughs> <laughs> you you, you didn't, didn't see that or hear that? <laughs> um, yeah, so what I meant to say is it's when I was starting in the industry, it was hard for me, like, oh, he's a, he's like working at ILM, that's amazing, like, how can I ever get there, right? And it's just, um, even now when I do tutorials, I because I know how things are done, it's for me, I think it's everyone should know that, because it's, for me, it's logical in my head, but for most of the people, it's not, and that's why I try to explain my tutorials in a way that beginners understand it, and I think that is very important that you try to always um, see where you are and like the knowledge you gain. Uh, don't feel like you have to be in the biggest company. It's good for you, but like, uh, don't worry and it, just be happy. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to say. You know, it's like appreciate it. It, 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 it was it was very very hard for me to leave ILM. You know, it's like oh, I want to reach the stars. Then you do it, and wait, why am I leaving now? I really thought I would regret. I, I did it by thinking it was a mistake. But look, it, it's fine. My ego is behind now. It's like, oh. okay, I'm not on the biggest project, but am I happy? Yes, it's fine. So um, d don't be frustrated if you don't reach everything you want because it might be an empty dream. Like the date happened, you might say, okay, it's like, I'm working with the same guy that was in the other company six months ago as well. Oh. At ILM, 99% of the guy were at Dineg or MPC the year before. So it's no different. If you don't reach exactly the title, yeah. you're not failing. Um, wait, wait. <laughs> yeah, they're like French things. Liberty, uh, That's my wife. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 Zupon. <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> Uh, any plan to stream or start a YouTube channel? Not really. Um, I, I don't have much to bring to people. Uh, um, uh, and it requires so much time. I don't have the dedication that, I mean, when you see a video of an hour from Arvid, there is a chance that he spent three hours, uh, or at least two hours, oh, like twice more, the time preparing it. I'm, I'm not there in my life right now. Um, I wish I was doing it before when I was much younger and I kind of miss it. This moment is actually I'm having fun with you guys, <laughs> but I, I, it's not happening anytime soon, to be honest. Yeah, I'm just here. Yeah, you're here. <laughs> There's a camera. <laughs> um, so what else? Um, uh, yeah, uh, what would you what would your advice your advice be um, someone starting out in the industry? Um, what art fundamentals to learn? And what will it? What well, what should the person learn to get better in the long run? Essentially, like it, it, that, it, that's a massive question you should have asked two hours ago. <laughs> that, that's it would sum everything we said today. Yeah. Okay. Go like be legal if you don't want to take any risk. So there is this wonderful software called Blender. It's free. You'll find tutorials. That being said, Blender might not give you a job. It's just an easy way to start. Yeah. And so as soon as you can find an indie version of Maya, it's not the best software. It's the software that almost every employer uses. That's what matters at the end is knowing what the employer is looking for. I can Katana is better, Houdini is better, XSI was better and might still be better even nobody touched it in 10 years. Anyway, the one which you're going to use is Maya. So yeah. start with Blender to quickly start switch to Maya or go to Maya directly if you can and um, follow Harvid. He has he has on YouTube channel enough videos so you can start from zero if you go back two years in time. 
And it's not just David, there's plenty of yeah. good other videos, good keywords, but follow this guy because at least you know that he's trustable already. You don't have to evaluate the video. I can tell you, it's, you can't trust what you see. Well, sometimes I, I watch my videos as well and I say, oh shit, that was weird what I was saying. So I do a redo, like a version yeah. two, but I, I try to keep the content up to date, which is uh, which works very too. Um, one more question is, would you say knowledge of programming or scripting is a must or a plus for a CG, um, CG effects or look dev artist? A plus. It's a plus. It's yeah. very not a must. Uh, that actually, that's what made uh, Arvid really shine along mm -hmm. so many good artists at ILM. He was one of the good artists, one of the one you want to keep, but also he was able to code and build the tools. And so the leads, like the people very higher up, who are going to see Arvid said, yes, I heard you're doing that. Could you implement that function too? Okay, in no time, Arvid became the to-go person for that tools, which was used on every show. So yeah. In yeah. that regard, it's a must. Yeah. That being said, I never wrote a line of code. Almost. I did a bit on gravity, but let, we can consider I did not code. And my career is there, it's yeah. fine. So it's a plus. Yeah, I think though, when you are um, in an interview and you're two guys and one does do coding and the other one doesn't, they will most of the time always take the one who has experience in coding. Yeah. So in that sense, if you want to compete in the industry, I would say it is a must to be able to do it. But um, well, you know what I mean? It's, you, it's, it's not part of your job description, but you will always be favored in an interview if you have that additional knowledge. <laughs> so right? Once you have the job, <laughs> it's just a plus. Yeah. If you need a job, yeah, you're in competition with other people and if you guys are equally good at art, you will take the one which is able to also cook at night. Yeah. You take the extra level, so yeah. Yeah, that's what I mean. You probably will not need to do coding once you get the job. Yeah. That's, that's I think, what we're saying. Oh, you can be good looking like this guy. <laughs> this works a lot. I would work for you for free. Oh man, come on. You sexy beast. Oh man. Okay, it's time. <laughs> no. Yeah. So I think we just finished up with the last question, which is from Danny Rack. Um, I know it's not your territory, but do you guys have any tips to improve ArcVis renders? ArcVis render is very good. And your problem is not the advice we can give you. Your problem is your client. I've been doing ArcVis at the beginning of my career. And I would try to start a little bit of grimes at the bottom, the contact, you know, like the, the, the bottom of the building, the concrete is more dirty, this yeah, kind of thing. Yeah. The client they was like, want I want it clean, I want <laughs> it plasticky. And he was showing me reference render he wanted of the worst, very looking CG render. And um, there is not, the ArcVis is on top of the photorealism actually. Yeah. It's just you unfortunately have to keep it a little bit CG because that's what shine in the picture is you want to promote the building. Yeah, and the only way like to pristine promote, and polished, yeah, yeah, exactly. The only way to promote it, it's to look different than the rest of the picture. Yeah. Uh, there is not much you can, the only thing you can do to be successful in ArcVis is making your work more flexible. So the client can come and say like, I wanted the tiles to be pink here and the wallpaper behind is not wallpaper, it's wood. And you have to be able to do yeah. in real time a flexible switch. That's what will drive you successful in ArcVis today. Okay. So, have you been recently to the movies? Have you watched 1917, perchance? No. You have not? No. Okay, so they won um, the Oscar, I believe, for Best VFX. But uh, I'm the worst person to... <laughs> I don't watch even the movie I work on. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I figured. Um, but, like, I can answer probably the question, and I totally think it's deserved. Um, obviously, in the race was, I think, um, Jungle, uh, Lion King, and 1917. 1917 is a war movie, which is invisible effects. Oh, I've seen, I've seen YouTube videos of it. Yeah. Okay. So, it was in competition, there was lots of talk, why is Lion King in, in the VFX Oscars? And, I don't know, like, they had one shot, which was a plate, I think, with the sunrise or sunset or something. Yeah, that's uh, the only shot. That's and it. it has been done by the, what's the name of the director? Uh, I forget. I forgot to. He's inside the Avengers, you know, he's the, the, um, the bodyguard of <laughs> yeah. Tony Stark. The, actually, the story is, I don't know if it's true, but he... Um, John Travo, yeah. That's yeah, John Travo, he actually shot it with his iPhone. I Well, I heard, heard that too. That? I think it's a rumor though. Yeah. Not sure. Maybe it's for the beauty of the story. Yeah. Like it, make it, 
Um, but so I didn't even see uh, Lion King either, but uh, I downloaded it <laughs> and I watched the first 10 minutes and man, it almost brings tears to my eyes. <laughs> like I discovered MPC is a wonderful company. A lot of people love to complain about MPC because they keep the salary low, they underbid the project they work on. The reality is that when you look at Lion King, they put a shame lots of very triple A company. Yeah. Like, and with junior, there is lots of junior out of school at MPC. Their work is unparalleled. It was beautiful. Whether you like the movie or not, that's not what I'm speaking about. The image is surprising. Yeah, and so about that. Just, I love you guys. <laughs> <laughs> No, but what I have to say, I think the Oscar is well deserved for 1917. I really enjoyed the movie and I did not see any effects, like obvious effects. Obviously, I know that most of this is uh, shot on plate, but um, they did, sorry, it's actually not that true. They actually had a very large set they built and they had quite a, quite a few camera moves which were with no edits. So oh. they had like continuous movements and the whole movie is a single shot. It's, it's, it's That's a, the most difficult shot to yeah. achieve. Uh, Revenant that we spoke a bit earlier today has this long shot with the fight with the bear. Yeah. Well, when we receive it, when we received the plate, I think it was 25 plate. We made it one shot. You don't see any cut, yeah. you don't see anything. That was, yeah. uh, and that's layout and comp who did all this the work. Trend, it's, yeah. That's the two departments who made it happen. It's fabulous. That, and so that's once again, the only thing that you don't see. Everybody knows that the bear is CG. Yeah. What nobody knew is like, it's 25 shots, not yeah. one. That's the beauty of it. Hello. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Anyway, uh, I think it's it's time. Yeah, yeah so, it's time. So I hope we did answer most of your questions. And again, thanks everyone for um, showing up to the stream. And thank you, Jan, for coming as well. I, I, <laughs> I'm the one thanking uh, you to host me and uh, you guys for being so curious and asking so many cool questions. <laughs> hey, you're here. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. it, I, I'm new to looking at camera. It's, it's, it's also cool. weird. Like you see that black thing there and then you got to look at like that. Like a also. very deep eye. <laughs> Um, yeah, so again, um, please check out my social media pages. They are being posted in the chat right now. And again, um, thanks so much for your time and sticking around with us. Yeah, so. uh, if you have any other question, you will always be able to answer. But if they are more specific to my experience, it will pass the question for along sure. and I'll take time to answer. Yeah. Um, okay. Cool. I think that's it. So thanks again, everyone. We will be out here. It's sunny in Vancouver, so we will probably go outside, maybe and, and do something. Can I say something more personal? <laughs> yes, do it. Don't be a douche. Wear a mask. Like protect. Oh yeah. If not your friend, your parents, anybody around, like that's the only way to stop it. So true. Wear a mask. It is. We have difficult times right now, so. Um, well, the yeah. only way to go back to normal time is all making an effort. Ask, even if the entire world wear a mask for two weeks, the virus is, it should it, be dead. It, yeah, 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 should be dead. That yeah. should be as easy as that. So just make an effort. Good point. All right, everyone. This is the interview with Jan Dupont, a CG supervisor at Zoic and a good friend of mine. I hope you guys learned something. He gave very insightful information and I hope you just uh, take it all in and apply these to your situation. So um, I want to thank Jan again for his uh, dedication and that he actually came by and we had this nice little interview. And be sure everyone to follow me on the social media pages so you can stay always in touch with any news and updates I'm having. So um, with, with that, I want to thank each and every one for your continued support. And I really appreciate all the comments and the thumbs up I'm getting. So thanks everyone and I will see you in the next video. Further than that, further than that. Boom, boom, boom. The interview, this is a... Oh, fuck off, I'm sorry. Um, they can't still see you. <laughs>